Welcome to the newest episode of my complete factory tutorial series. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the world generator. In this video I will go over some technical stuff first and after that we are going to go over all the different tabs and settings you can manipulate when creating a new map. This includes general settings, resource settings, terrain settings, enemy settings and advanced settings. Timestamps can be found in the video description down below. First we have to talk about chunks. What even are chunks, you may ask now? Chunks divide up the entire map into 32 by 32 tiles of land. Chunks are only important for internal game logic as well as the generation of the map. As the factorial map is quasi infinite, new chunks are only generated if they are needed. But when does this happen? New chunks get unveiled as soon as they are within the active area of a radar or the player. Radars also scan their surrounding area which unveils chunks as well. I use the term unveil as there is a 3 chunk border of hidden chunks around all unveiled chunks. The areas of the map that are hidden by this fog of war behave just like normal chunks would. Aliens for instance go about the usual business. Your pollution cloud also generates chunks but they will also stay blacked out until you unveil them. The maximum size of the map is technically 2000 by 2000 kilometers or 2 million by 2 million tiles or 4 trillion total tiles. You won't be able to play on a fully generated map with this size as the entire map is always stored in the memory of your computer so this becomes a practical limitation pretty quickly. Also generating a map this size would take quite some time if you don't have access to a supercomputer from NASA or something. Now that we have all of that out of the way, we can have a look at all the world generation settings we can change when creating a new map. Let's start with the top of the window. There are a couple presets to choose from to guide you through all the numerous options the world generator supplies. There's default, which is pretty default. Rich resources features richer resources. In marathon mode, everything is more expensive. If you think aliens are too weak, you should try Death World, where there are more aliens, which also evolve faster. If this is still too lame for you, you can try a good old Death World Marathon, which as the name implies, combines Death World and Marathon. In Rail World, resources are further apart, so you kinda have to use trains, but alien expansion is turned off, so they don't expand back into territory you have already cleared. A ribbon world limits the height of the map for some extra twistiness. If you feel like you want to be alone, then you can choose to play on an island in an endless ocean. This is the starting seed for the quasi random map generation algorithm. Entering the same seed will result in the same looking world if you use the same factorial version and the same settings for the terrain. The map exchange string is basically the map seed put on steroids as it not only contains the seed but also all settings that got dialed in. You can import or export such a string at the bottom of the window. In the first tab you can control the generation of all different resource types. Frequency controls the total amount of ore patches. Size controls the physical size of ore patches. Richness controls the amount of ore per single tile. It also increases the further away from spawn you get. Just in case you're wondering how the generation works, it's basically a modified Perlin noise generator that creates a height map which then gets translated into a 2D plane. There's also a nice graphical representation by Cube on the Factorial Forum, which you can find in the video description. The general look and feel of the map can be controlled through the terrain settings. Switching the map type to island will result in an island in an endless ocean. For water entries you can set a scale and coverage. Scale controls how big individual lakes and forests are, while coverage defines how many lakes and forests there are. Cliffs can be modified in two ways. Frequency sets the amount of cliffs, while continuity controls the length of cliff segments. 
controlling the amount of desert and grassland is done with the bias setting. Manipulating bias for moisture changes how much desert or grassland there is. Turning it up all the way will result in more grassland and turning it down will convert everything into a dry desert. Scale again controls how big individual pieces of desert or grassland are. Turning up the terrain type will result in more red desert and size is controlling how big pieces of red desert and sand are. When peaceful mode is enabled, aliens won't attack first. This means that aliens are not going to get triggered by the pollution you emit, but they will defend themselves when you're trying to get rid of their lovely homes just because you need to build one more green circuit factory. Frequency controls the amount of enemy bases, while size controls their, well, size, thus increasing or decreasing the amount of spawners and worms. The starting area is a special area around the spawn. There won't be any enemies within it. Uranium and oil won't be generated within a starting area though. The size parameter controls the size of the starting area. This enables the expansion of aliens. Groups of aliens which get sent out by an existing village can build new villages in empty areas, for instance areas you have previously cleared. This sets the maximum distance in which these groups search for a suitable spot to build a new village. This controls the minimum size of such a group and this controls the maximum size. The cooldown is the time between two alien groups that get sent out by a single village. This controls the minimum cooldown. It's effectively the minimum amount of time between two alien groups that get sent out. You guess it again, this is the maximum time between two alien groups that get sent out. Enables alien evolution and with that of aliens get stronger over time. Controls how fast evolution happens just by time. Don't waste your time. Controls how pissed aliens get and how much they evolve because you are destroying their lovely homes just for you to lay down yet another set of chaotic and poorly planned out rails that will lead to ultimate congestion and the failure of your factories. The more total pollution you produce, the faster aliens are going to evolve. You again guessed it, this controls how fast this happens. Why are you even watching this video if you already know how all of this works? A replay records everything you do, so you can watch it back later. When you plan on using the replay, you shouldn't update the game as this often leads to the replay getting destroyed. If you plan on having a limited world size, then you can dial the width and height in right here. Leaving the fields empty results in a quasi unlimited map with the only limit being your potato gaming rig. Setting a size limit won't help you with performance as the map gets generated as you explore it. Setting this to expensive will change the cost and some ratios of crafting recipes in the game. This actually doesn't change anything if you're playing without any mods. Some mods may use this option though. The entered number will simply be multiplied with the cost for your research. The research queue allows you to research more efficiently by queuing researches. The setting controls its availability. As you probably already guessed, this enables or disables the emission of pollution entirely. Pollution gets dissipated automatically by the terrain and trees. Here you can control how quickly that happens. Trees get damaged and killed by pollution and here you can set how tough those rough wood guys are. Every tree that dies takes some of the pollution that killed it with him into the nothingness of death. As you probably guessed, this controls how bad as the trees are. This ratio controls how fast pollution spreads into neighboring chunks. Now that we set and understood everything, we can generate the map directly by clicking the generate button. Or we can open the preview window to see how the map will look like and how it gets affected by different settings. When you're happy with the look, you can click play to play the map. For some cool graphics and additional info, you can visit the Factorio wiki, which is linked in the video description. That was already everything I have to tell you about this topic. If you still have questions, then feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you learned something new, please leave a like and also subscribe, so you don't miss out on any new videos and tutorials. Feedback is also always appreciated. Have a great time, see you all next time.